With over 6,500 cars competing, legend cars are one of America's quickest growing motorsport categories. The class is now expanding rapidly in Australia, and legend cars represent an affordable, cost-effective way of going motor racing. Today, we take you to the Lucas Oil Lismore Speedway in the New South Wales Northern Rivers region for the North Coast Legend Car Classic. And it's an event that has attracted interest from some of motorsport's biggest names. Our coverage supported by US Legend Cars International. On Fox Sports, this is Checkered Flag celebrating 20 fantastic seasons. Proudly presented by the Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix, Melbourne's Etihad Stadium, October 24. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster. Hello and welcome everyone to the Lucas Oils Lismore Speedway. Good to have your company this week on Checkered Flag for the North Coast Legend Car Classic. The first time the fabulous little legend cars have appeared on our program. I'm looking forward to this one with no little expectation. They put on a tremendous show, a very cost-effective form of going motor racing. And, uh, well, you'll learn all about that in the next hour. Tonight's event also forming an integral part of the Lube Alloy Country Series. And after five rounds, Mick Hebditch is the tournament leader on 470 points in advance of Robbie Rawlings, Michael Cook, Brian Neal and Rick Christie rounding out the top five. Tonight's host venue, the Lucas Oil Lismore Speedway, established back in 1968. It is 400 metres on the pole line, predominantly a clay base and really doesn't have any straights. It's very much a big circle but often produces some of the best racing in the sport. So once again, welcome to our coverage. I can promise you very close side-by-side -side racing tonight. And Wade Unger recently spoke with this category's technical director. Scott Reinhardt joins me here. And Scott, welcome to Australia. Thank you, thank you. It's, uh, it's good to be here. I've been here uh, probably about two and a half weeks now, uh, seeing some of the sites, helping John get uh, set up with the, the Speedway uh, Australia Legends Car Program, uh, getting that going, up and running, in line with the program that we have in the States. Uh, it's been been really good. Now, it's something that we should explain. Prior to tomorrow night, you guys are actually going to run on what we call a bitumen at Sydney Motorsport Park. You're going to have an asphalt event and then come and race on the dirt that night. Yes, sir. Uh, we do that in the States. Uh, we, we have done that since almost day one where we'll race uh, asphalt circle track, asphalt road course, and dirt, all with the same car, a few setup changes, uh, different tire for the uh, dirt. But uh, other than that, same car, uh, same same drivers. Uh, There's no dirt category in the world where you can do that. That is true. That That is uh, one unique uh, component of the cars. They are factory built cars all out of the same factory there in Harrisburg, North Carolina. Uh, all built to the same specifications for the different surfaces. You don't have to buy new chassis, uh, new, new suspension. It's all the same setup. Now there's over 6,000 of these cars across America alone. Yes sir, we, we started in 1992 uh, with the manufacture of the, of the cars. Uh, they are built in an assembly line uh, fashion there in Harrisburg. And uh, yes, there is 6,500 cars to date out there being raced. Probably 175 racetracks that we race at each year across the United States. Uh, we're also in about 25 other countries, uh, England, now Australia. Uh, we've been here for about three years now. Uh, John has uh, really come in line with our program, being involved with our points our, excuse me, our points uh, system. Uh, we do have an international point system that we keep through all the competitors across the world that uh, they can all compete against each other. It surprised me that there's actually uh, a couple of countries in Europe where you're very strong as well. Yes, sir. Uh, they do. Uh, we actually have two classes there. They don't do a lot of dirt track racing there, but uh, we do have the, the road course and the asphalt circle track stuff there. Uh, and again, they're all part of the international point system that we keep uh, there in the U.S. Yes, Legend Cars Technical Director Scott Reinhardt chatting with Wade Unja recently. A bit of an insight into what is happening with these cars worldwide. Warren Ferguson is with me. This will be sensational tonight. 
It certainly will, David. Looking great here at Lismore. Some great racing. Here's Heat One Grid. Indeed, uh, some very notable names here. Adam Brand, the country music superstar. Braden Wilmington, another second generation driver. Glenn Mitchell is in the field. So, a good field in the opening heat. So, a bit of history on checkered flag. First time in 20 years, the mighty legend cars strut their stuff on our program. And the early race leader here is Daryl Moon in the green machine. The white 34 car, that's Adam Brand, the country music star. He's passed on the inside by Greg Davis. And now we go on board with Adam. He's very handy with a guitar. As you can see, not bad with the steering wheel. Now he's tried his uh, hand at a few different divisions, Adam, and done very well at all of them. He's hunt the seeds from Paul Morris, former V8 supercar star and super touring star, and now sprint car driver. Paul out enjoying the legend car hostilities tonight. That's him in the blue 67 car. Have a look at this racing down the back straight. 39 is in second. That's Stuart Bond. Although on the inside now coming quickly is Braden Wilmington. Yeah, we see there seven, uh, Greg Davis in the 7A car. He's trying the outside groove, trying to find some extra lines to get through this field. But it's uh, it's actually holding him back just a little bit at the moment. We see the 41 car looking for some more, more track. Heading over the infield as well. <laughs> That's Glenn Mitchell. He too is an experienced Speedway campaigner. Lap 5 of 8. Look, 1,250cc Yamaha motorcycle engines. I reckon they're revving it around, what, 10,500? Yeah, they run them up to about 10,500, David. As we see Paul Morris now looking for that outside groove. He's doing a great job coming through from the rear of the field. Good stuff. The legend cars in full flight at Lucas Oil. Lismore Speedway. Yeah, Paul Morris is on the fly at the moment. Well, I'll tell you what, that driver on screen, Daryl Moon. He's going to be almost impossible to stop here. Further onboard action from Paul Morris. Picton Higher, Heat Race sponsor here. Opening race of the program. This event, the North Coast Classic, being staged over two nights. Subsequently, you'll see coverage over consecutive weeks on Checkered Flag. This week and next week, part two. Yeah, we see Paul Morris there. The perils of running the outside. He was up there in a fine second. And he fell back to about fourth. He's persisting, though. He's trying to see if he can get a run on these front cars. Last lap now, Warren. And have a look at the racing. Paul Morris hanging it out wide in car 67. Daryl Moon off the final turn, and he wins heat race number one. Morris, what a drive by him. He came from position 10, thank you, up to second, the Queenslander. Brandon Williamson, he was solid in third. Stuart Bond, who started on the front row, fading to finish fourth. And Greg Davis... Well, he finished fifth after starting from P3 on the circuit. Well, don't tell me that doesn't graphically illustrate the value of legend car racing. Great stuff from the outset tonight. Yeah, we see the top five cars. They're all tied together at the end of it as we see the race recap right now. And this start from Moon really set up his entire race. Yeah, he got away and uh, led fairly comfortably. As we saw with a couple of laps to go, he did start to come back to them slightly. But this is what transpired early. Stuart Bond was running second. In car 39, that's the Paul Morris on board. Glenn Mitchell in the orange car. Machine 41, he almost takes an infield excursion there, a bit of motocrossing. Yeah, a little bit sideways, you can see a bit greasy there on the bottom of the racetrack. And Paul Morris there, certainly muscled his way through the field to come from that P10 starting spot. Yeah, he's doing himself, Paul Morris. And so they ran down the back straight, so... How many forms of motor racing do you see a top five like this 100 metres out from the chequered flag? Tremendous stuff. And chequered flag taken by Daryl Moon. Let's head to the pits. With heat one winner, Daryl Moon. Daryl, good way to get the weekend underway. No, it, sure, it certainly was a good weekend, a good way to get the weekend underway. But yeah, no, it's awesome. Thank you. Plenty of action out there on this tight Lismore circuit. Yeah, first time we've ever been here, and it's actually pretty tight and pretty, uh, yeah, a lot of action going on for sure, yeah. What do you hope for the rest of the weekend now? Hope for the rest of the weekend just to keep the same thing going, like going on. It'd be good. Yeah. All the best with it. No, no worries, thanks. Happy days. Yeah, Matt Payne, one of Australia's leading motor racing journalists, working with us in the pits tonight again. Good to have Matt back. Wrote the book on how to be a genuine, genuine petrol head, he did. North Coast Classic continues, heat race number two. 
This brought to you by Moon's Bobcat Service and Earthworks. Neil, Moon, Cook, Assay, Rawlings, Mitchell, Giffen, Seaton and Sullivan. Aaron Seaton, the son of another former V8 superstar, V8 supercar superstar. I refer, of course, to Glenn Seaton. And we will catch up with Glenn on the program at some stage. Underway, Brian Neal. He was swamped on the outside by Tyson Moon, who got a really good start. Car number eight is quick. That is Brett Mitchell. Brilliant paint scheme on that car. He runs in third position. We see in the meantime, Brian Neal charging back on the outside. Car 13 also looking the goods early in this one, Jason S.A. Yeah, Tyson, Tyson Moon up there in the front. He certainly gave Brian, Brian Neal the squeeze on the start, but we see the number eight car there, Brett Mitchell, blasting into the lead. Yeah, Brian Neal safely in second. Have a look at this speedway again. The legend cars turning it on on the Lucas Oil Lismore Clay. Onto the back straightaway again. A big wrap to the Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix, Etihad Stadium, October 24 this year. Principal sponsor of Checkered Flag. Of course, tonight we acknowledge the assistance of US Legends Cars International for supporting our coverage. To our Brad Griffin's doing a great job in this race in the 81 car. He's been on the outside, the inside, and blasting his way through. We see the 13 car there getting a little bit of understeer. You can see Griffin on the outside, still persisting. It's, uh, there's racing everywhere here, David. Yeah, multiple lines, despite there being a maximum of 1250cc cubic capacity. Oh, problems as we see out the back of the onboard of Aaron Seaton. These cars have no problems running around the 100 kilometres an hour. Mark, lap six of eight. As the action continues, I thought they might put the orange lights on, but that is not the case. So the battle does continue up front. And we can see that Brad Giffen in 81 is coming quickly towards the lead. That's him in the blue and white car on the outside. It's interesting the speed that, uh, that Giffen's keeping up on the outside as we see Brian Neal take a bit of understeer and a bit of uh, contact there. But uh, these cars run a sequential gearbox, David, and, and uh, they run in about third and fourth gear. And as this track slicks out, it's going to have an impact on these uh, spec tyres because they're a harder compound. We, we see the last lap board right now. And that 81 car is pressuring the eight as they come around to the checker. Yeah, Brett Mitchell, the leader in 81. It is Brad Geffen. But the checkered flag will fly and car number eight takes the win. Brett Mitchell, he did well. Started from position six on the grid. Was able to get to the front and not headed from there. So Mitchell Geffen, SA, Aaron Seaton was fourth in the 30 car. And Robbie Rawlings rounding out the top five. You're watching the North Coast Classic. The Legend Cars on Checkered Flag as we check out the speedway.com.au race recap. Of course, Speedway Racing News Online, the place to visit for your Speedway news. We see Brett Mitchell here on the on the replay. He went upstairs looking for a, uh, a nice run, and here he is going around Tyson Mood and uh, put him into the lead, and he was never headed from that point. Love the paint job. And, well, the challenges were coming from all over the place. No shortage of fender leaning. Three wide. Giffen tries the outside, then the inside, then the outside. Anywhere where he could pass a car. Bit of contact here. There it is right there. Could have been a lot worse. They got away with it, Jason S.A. in the 13 car. That would have got his attention, though, it's fair to say. And this was the final corner with Brett Mitchell doing enough to take the checkered flag. And a good job by him here now is Matt Payne in the pits. Hey, two winner, Brett Mitchell. Brett, good way to get the weekend underway. Uh, yeah, mate, yeah, it was good to get a win straight up. Um... Haven't been here for a couple of years. Uh, had a lot of success here in street stocks before racing, and um, yeah, it's good to come back here. As soon as they said they were coming to Lismore, I was straight on the straight on the list to be here. You know, uh, it's great. Dave Lander puts on a great show, and um, yeah, I knew it would be a place. These things are great around here. It stays nice and smooth. It'll be good. How do you find a legend car around the tight circuit? Uh, it's good, mate. Yeah, yeah. We race a lot tighter circuits than this. Um, that's pretty open. free flowing circuit for us. Um, yeah, they're great, great anywhere, mate. They're great. Uh, you can adapt. To them. And you're based in Newcastle, obviously got to travel a fair bit to do your racing these days. Yeah, mainly uh, Parramatta and Canberra, 
yeah, that's where we go. Uh, Parramatta every second week, so it's good to get away to these country tracks and, and show what we got, you know what I mean? Uh, these cars are, are new to the country, and the more places we can get out and show them off, the better, you know. We're here to put on good racing, and John puts a lot of time and effort into it, and, you know, we can't ask for any more than the organisation of this legend cars, mate. It's a, a class, the best I've ever been involved in in any division I've been in, so really good. Good luck for the rest of the weekend. All right, thanks, mate. Thank you, gentlemen. Hope you're enjoying our coverage of the North Coast Legend Cars Classic. Coming to you from the Lucas Oil Lismore Speedway. Conditions here are really good for this race meeting. I've alluded to Paul Morris. He's one of the very big names in attendance here tonight. And Matt Payne had the opportunity to chat with him earlier. Paul Morris, what's a Bathurst 1000 champion doing here in Lismore at the Legend Car Northern Championships? Oh, I'm doing what everyone else wishes they were doing and too scared to do. <laughs> Pretty good fun with these cars around here, and uh, always come down to Lismore, support the uh, you know, the local country tracks, and put on a bit of a show. It's good fun. It's been an amazing 12 months for you, I guess, um, in a lot of respects, both racing sprint cars, also taking out that Bathurst Championship. Do you sometimes look back on it and still pinch yourself that it's all happened? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, wake up every day and a big smile on my face. So yeah, definitely still pinch myself. Life-changing experience for sure. With the sprint car racing, it's something you've turned your hand to in recent years. It's uh, something you seem to really enjoy. Oh, I do. I, I enjoy the, you know, obviously the cars are just amazing to have that much horsepower and not really know what to do with it. And, uh, you know, when you do get it hooked up, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a feeling. So um, enjoy it, uh, do as much as I can. And then uh, obviously with the Classic coming up soon as well, I'll, I'll be, can't wait to get back there. Speaking of knowing what to do with it, you worked with Donny Schotts over the last month or so. What's he like to work with? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I get to probably pick his brain a lot more than anyone else because um, I'm, really, I'm really no threat to him or, or anyone else. So the, the opportunity to, to work alongside him for, for a fortnight uh, just takes your whole, whole um, level of understanding with the sport to, to another level completely. Can you put that into V8 supercar terms as to what that's like? Who that would be like working with? Yeah, it'd be like uh, you know working with Roland Dane and Jamie Winkup and Dado, and they just open up the open up the, the data cabinet and go, here you go, boys. So it's uh, it's it's probably in that level for sure. And away from the track, you aren't really away from the track, of course, with the V8 supercars driving experience in the performance driving centre. Uh, yeah, we've still got that running, and you know, we never close except for Christmas Day and New Year's Day, and it's been really popular with all the, everyone up on the Gold Coast um, having a holiday and learning what it's like to drive a V8 supercar. So it's been good too. And what shows for the rest of the weekend in this legend thing? Uh, we're here to win it. We're here to win it. So um, yeah, you got the elbows out on the first heat there, and still got a bumper bar on it. We might have to use that later, but uh, yeah, we'll be up there for sure. Good luck with it. Thanks, mate. You're watching the one and only Checkered Flag on Fox Sports, celebrating 20 years. Presented by the 2015 Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix. Eddie Had Stadium, Melbourne, October 24. Book now. Introducing a Checkered Flag Golden Moment. Five laps left to run now for our race leader. Well, big mistake from Belgo straight ahead, allows far back into the lead, but it was the man who just crept on the screen, Mad Max Gumpney, the Sydney sider, possibly the fastest man on the racetrack at the moment, and this is shaping up as one hell of a finish, Colin Farr. Yeah, Max Gumpney started back in position number six, been driving the wheels off the Valvoline number five, he's now in third, challenging for second, he gets through there now. Gumpney, he's come from nowhere in this one, he's haunted down, tracked down the two race leaders. Oh, look at Robert Farr. He's got a problem. It's Ian Lewis. That's one man you wouldn't want to be trying to lap. Ian Lewis also a very, very fast competitor. Look at Dumsley all over the back of Farr. Farr allows him up the inside. Farr just gets the advantage into turns three and four with no more than two laps to go. Last lap it is actually, and it is Robert Farr with Ian Lewis. Lock him. He must be very nervous. Oh, Dumsley almost gives him a tap there, Cole. They almost touch down the back straightaway for the last time. Dumsley has one last lunge. Here comes Bill on the inside as well. Farr's going to get there. Must have really been a photo finish for second. Dumsley, I think, may have got there. The firecrackers go off here at Warrnambool Speedway. Looks like they're not finished yet either. 
the race is over, but these two boys are not content. Good to have you with us. Hope you enjoyed that golden moment. Another one coming your way later on today's program. Welcome back to Lismore Speedway, the magnificent Northern Rivers region of New South Wales for our continued coverage of the North Coast Classic. Prior to the next heat, here is a profile. One of the interesting drivers taking part in the action tonight in Lismore is third generation driver Aaron Seaton. The son of V8 supercar hero Glenn learned his racecraft in karts and he says he's looking forward to the challenge this weekend. Well I've got the opportunity to drive one in uh, August last year. They offered me to have a go and obviously this is my first weekend in it. and It's been really fun to drive and it's been awesome and I'd really thank the legend people a lot for giving me this car to drive the weekend. Despite being new to legend cars, Seaton has had experience racing on dirt ovals previously. No, I've actually raced in five events before in a class called Mod Lights, which is much the same, just a different body in on them and a bit different in the suspension wise, but they're, much, they're very similar. They both got a thousand cc motorbike engines in them so they're awesome fun to drive the little legend cars and the mod lights as well speedway won't be the only motorsport discipline on seaton's radar in 2015 in fact he has a busy schedule planned yeah obviously i've got the opportunity to drive in with bob pearson's product motorsport team with the a mitsubishi evo 10 in the shanna's national series and also, I've been given an opportunity to drive with Scott Taylor Motorsport in the Porsche Cup Challenge class. And I'm really looking forward to those, and I'll be able to gain valuable experience in my driving with these classes, and it'll be great to learn from the two teams. Predictably, Aaron Seaton has no shortage of goals in motorsport. Well, luckily, I've been able to get an opportunity to drive with Scott Taylor Motorsport in the Class B Porsche Cup Challenge car. And I see, hopefully, I can see that veering me towards getting ready for supercars with obviously from the Evo it's got a brake booster on it so I'll be getting used to the the heart like the harder pressure on the brakes and it's just I'd love to veer off to that supercar bar. The surname Seaton is synonymous with Australian motor racing but Aaron reckons he was too young to take too much notice of his dad's lofty status in V8 supercars. Yeah, he was lucky enough to win two championships and what I hear is very good, but I can't really remember. I was too little to remember anything and I think I went to my first race when I was 18 months old, so I've been around it all my life and pretty much racing has been my life. So, does Dad offer much advice? Yeah, he gives me very good advice that I really look forward to learning from him and see what he has to offer me and I can gain a valuable, a lot of valuable experience from. So action continuing now at Lismore Speedway and it will be Heat 3. Paul Morris is scheduled to start on the front row of this one. We'll check the field out for you now. And on his outside, it'll be Rick Christie, Brad Rawlings, Glenn Mitchell, Braden Wilmington, Adam Brand, Greg Davis, Stuart Bond, Daryl Moon and Ashley Hodak in the 67 car. So the two blue machines on the front row. Paul Morris not wasting any time. When the green light was shown, he was out of there, Warren. He has taken advantage of that uh, inverted round two heat and uh, streaking away right at the moment. Car 11, who started on the front row beside Morris Christie in second. The challenges will come shortly. It's the nature of legend car racing. So onto the back section again. I mentioned earlier in the show, this place really just a big circle. And have a look at this, as Rick Christie comes from nowhere and surges to the front on the low line. Also quick is Glenn Mitchell in the orange car up to second. Yeah, they're letting Morris know who's boss here at the moment. And that 41 car is making a great bit on the inside there. So a good shot of Glenn Mitchell down the back straight. Christie, nice the tail they run. You can just see a little bit of track prep on this uh, second round of heat. It's not quite so slick as it was before. So these cars uh, won't have the understeer we saw in the earlier rounds. Here's the speedway.com.au replay. 
Rick Christie going up on the inside of Paul Morris. Yeah, I think Morris there was trying that uh, outside line and uh, opened the door there for Christie and he shot his way through. He really will race anything, Paul Morris, won't he? The reigning Bathurst champion. And something of a major coup for this division to have the likes of Paul involved in the racing here tonight. You can see the different body silhouettes that are utilised too, Warren. Yeah, there certainly is, David. There's uh, two different styles. These are spec class. Oh, rough move there by Glenn Mitchell, pushing his way up the inside. Yeah, he's gone to the front. Very aggressive. Now, word is just coming through that the chief steward is going to penalise Glenn Mitchell two spots for that move we just saw. And if that is the case, I do not believe it. That is ridiculous. Wow, I would have said that's racing. Yeah, it was a bit tough, it was a bit rough, but, you know, that's what we're here for. We're here to see the guys duke it out. That's crazy. So across the line, Mitchell, despite being first of the checker, will in fact be relegated to third, which means Paul Morris has been installed as the race victor in advance of Rick Christie, Brad Rawlings and Braden Williamson. Well, I'm sorry, but... That is knee-jerk reaction by the officials at its finest. Well, i got to say I'm a bit shocked there, David. You know, the, the guy drove his heart out passing cars, and uh, we've seen a few other cars bump wheels in that here tonight. And um, as, we, as we see the race recap, yeah, wow. We'll, we'll see that incident again here. And um, I've lost for words. We've been going to the Speedway for a long time, you and I. That was nothing more than a wow. gentle glance as a part of racing. I'm surprised, you know, he, he puts a move here, there's nearly a bump, you know, it's just good racing. Here we are. Oh, stop it. Jeez. Stop it. How could he be relegated for that? We uh, we better wrap these guys up in cotton wool, I think, you know, after that one. Oh, please. All right, so well done to Paul Morris, I guess. Matt playing in position in the pits. He'll talk to Paul in a moment. I'd almost say that pass that Paul put on was worse. You know, he ran the guy wide. But no. hey, look, you know, we're, we're getting opinionated now, aren't we? No, I'm all for being focused on driver safety. But goodness me. All right, here's Matt Payne with Paul Morris. Paul Morris, winner of heat number three. It's getting pretty tight out there. Yeah, it is. Um, it was pretty one laney out there then. And I, I went to the top. It didn't work real good and got freight trained and then uh, managed to work my way back to the front. So bumper bars are still on it. Everyone's happy. Preliminary feature tonight, what changes are we going to make before the feature? Uh, I think I'll go and have a Pepsi Max and um, get out there and get up on the wheel. Good luck with it. Thank you. So Paul Morris getting a win there. I'm sure that Glenn Mitchell will be seething with the decision to see him relegated. Anyway, enough of that. Let's move to heat race number four. Still ahead today, following this race, it's the preliminary A main. And Elders Real Estate presenting heat four of the North Coast Classic here from the Lucas Oil Lismore Speedway. Seaton, Giffen, Mitchell. That's Brett this time. Rawlings was next. Then SA, Michael Cook, Tyson, Moon, Brian Neal, and Scott Sullivan. Love a little legend uh, convertible. They're using as the pace car. Absolutely brilliant. Well done to the crew at Legend Cars Australia. So I'll start imminent now. So Aaron Seaton. And it is blast off time. Giffen on his outside. Seaton's first drive tonight in a legend car. And Giffen is going to prove hard to catch in this one. Yeah, Giffen had a great run from the back of the field in the first heat. Drove his way up to second place. And uh, look, I've got to say, young Seaton's doing a fine job. He had a fourth place in the first run. He's, he's hanging tough here on this first lap as well. So out in front. It is Gifford. Here's a charge from Brett Mitchell in the fluoro car as we look out the back of Aaron Seaton's machine now with the onboard camera. And Brett Mitchell in that fluoro paint scheme car is coming hard at him. Yeah, nicely turned out car there, Brett Mitchell. He in the 34 car there was starting to run out of a bit of space. And you see the, uh, the 34 car, Robbie Rawlings, had to use a bit of the infield. But uh, Seaton hanging tough in second. And Brad Giffen still blasting away out front. A couple of car lengths separating first and second. 
Robbie Rawlings in 34. So Seaton is hanging in there. Of course, he's a, a progeny of kart racing. There's so many race car drivers, irrespective of category. You just see a, a mature, tight line on the bottom of the racetrack there from Seaton. You know, Giffen's out there searching for grip, searching for what he can do. And remember, these cars, as I said earlier, spec tyres, so they're a hard compound. It's hard to get hold of the dirt. So it's very easy to get offline and, and get out of shape. But, uh, and you see the controlled style of Seaton there. It's actually paying dividends. Yeah, he's super smooth. Onto the main straight again. And I use that expression loosely when I say straight. The big oval. And Giffen. Continues to lead this one, but he's by no means safe because Aaron Seaton is very tidy in second spot. Not really letting him get away. If Giffen makes an error, Seaton will be right there. Good grip down there too, as you can see. So Seaton maximising his traction. Last lap and the youngster is coming out the race leader. Is there room on the inside? He's going to have a big go, Seaton. But Giffen took it. Good drive, the kid. In second. And... Third to the chequered flag, Rawlings in 34, then Brett Mitchell, Jason Assay in fifth position. Again, highly entertaining legend car event. Yeah, they're racing all over the track, you know, the, the little cars on the big wide open spaces here at Lismore. Um, Brad Griffin done a great job, uh, Giffen I should say, done a great, great job in his two heat races. He'd be looking pretty good for the start in the feature. And uh, how's young Seaton? Here we see the, re the, the start on the recap. Giffen blasts into the lead, but I tell you what, Seaton found the groove and never let go of it. Yeah, it was great. So early stages of heat race number four, Giffen able to break free of the pack. At that point, I think I said in the court, it'll be very hard to stop from there. And of course, he did go on to win, but it wasn't until Aaron Seaton put up one hell of a fight. Yeah, he certainly gave him a shake up there at the end. You can see here, Seaton just hung to that low groove, that darker ribbon of dirt as we see with the 34 and the 8 car, ran out of racing room there. But uh, that dark ribbon of dirt kept the grip on the inside, and you know, you see again right here, and he nearly snuck away with the win. Yeah. Would have been interesting another lap or two, wouldn't it? It certainly would have been. So Giffen, he was obviously running wider lines, seated, surging up on the inside, and the chequered flag unfolded, and Giffen winning by one and a half car lengths. Here he is. Here with Brad Giffen, winner of heat number four. Brad, great win out there. It's uh, nice and tight up front. Yeah, thank you. Um, first time I've been in Lismore before and um, loving the track. You know, it's different than everything that I've raced on before, different shape. Um, so, yeah, we're having a good time so far. How long have you been racing uh, Legends for? I've uh, been in the Legend division for about um, two years now. So, yeah, and we're getting quicker each time we get in the car. So, it's good. What do you love about the cars? Um... Probably, I come from kart racing, so probably because the wheelbase and everything's so small, and you got so much power under the hood of these little cars, um, you got to be you just you got to be real nice and smooth, and so it's kind of like going back to the kart days. That's what I love about it. So. Heading into tonight's feature, what are your hopes? Uh, I think we'll be starting towards the pointy end, so if I can just keep the car nice and straight and come home with no damage, I'll be happy. So yeah. all the best with it. Thank you. Cheers. Adam Brand is a genuine superstar of country music, but more importantly, he's also a massive fan of dirt track speedway racing. Mate, I, look, I guess I'm just like any other kid. Kids love race cars, they love racing, you know, from a young age with the, uh, you know, on, on our scooters, right through to, uh, you know, right through to, to being a grown up. You know, some, some kids never grow up. That's, that's me and a lot of other people here, obviously, you know. But Speedway really got into my blood from a very early age. My mum was taking me down to Claremont Speedway when I was still in nappies. I was um, sitting in Fowl House Corner there, mate, you know, yelling and screaming and having a great time. So, um, yeah, it's in the blood. Late last year, Adam released a new album, but he's interrupted his promotional tour to race at this weekend's North Coast Legend Cars Classic. Yeah, look, uh, I released an album in August of last year. So 
So we uh, we did three months of touring, taking a break over the you know holiday season, then start again after Tamworth. Um, and this 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 Lismore meeting, two nights here, just fell into a perfect little pocket where I wasn't doing anything. So uh, yeah, you couldn't have kept me away with wild horses, mate. Brand makes no secret of the fact he is passionate about legend car racing. They just look fantastic. As soon as you as soon as you see them, you go, "Wow, look at this little hot rod!" You know, um, I'm only five eight, so it's a perfect size for me. You know, <laughs> uh, you know they're, they're they're great little cars. They're all very even. You know, they're um, they're they're well they're well controlled, well governed. You know, the controlling body, um, I think, do a fantastic job at keeping them nice and even, so that even someone like me with not a lot of experience can just come here and have a, have a great weekend racing. Adam says the other aspect of racing that he really enjoys is the fact that it provides a release from his sometimes daunting touring and recording schedule. Yeah, look, I think anything that takes you away from what you do, you know, the majority of your time is a really good distraction, especially for something you really enjoy. You know, I, I, love, I love racing, so to be able to come here, just take my head completely somewhere different, gives you that nice, gives you that nice sort of space, you know. Um, and look, you know the people the people that go to speedway the fans the people involved the competitors the families they're, they're just really good good people um i i think there's a lot of similarities between um country music fans and speedway fans so you know the whole family goes to race meetings the whole family goes to a country music festival right from the right from the kids for three four years old right through to the grandparents so it's a really good family sport This is Checkered Flag on Australia's Sports Leader. Supported proudly by the Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix. Be a part of the action on October 24, 2015. Book now. Introducing a Checkered Flag Golden Moment. Donnie Shots is certainly the man to beat. He's in front of the American Car 15. Here's Jackson on the inside, the Australian. Unfortunately, didn't have the pace or the run out of turn number two. Shots the leader, Jackson runs second. Robert Barr is third. Dumsney is fourth. Four. Danny Smith makes a mistake. He loses two spots. That's a tragedy for the driver from Danville in Indiana. Yeah, Danny might be getting a little bit tired. All those laps he's run coming from where he did. He, he might be getting a little bit muscle fatigue setting in right now. Shots has two laps to go next time he comes down to the start finish line. Are you watching the man that will win the inaugural golf at Gilmore Cat 50,000? I think you are. Skip Jackson is second. Far is third. Dumsney now moves up on the inside. The third, that's where the battle is here between Dumsney and Robert Farr. They're contesting third position. Shots the leader on the last racing lap. Skip Jackson second, Max Dumsley has moved up to third. Two laps to go in the Goff and Gilmore, Cat 50,000. Gee, the Americans quick out of the blocks again. Jackson up the inside, fast third. Tommy Tolton coming very strongly to the other American. Here's Dumsley up on the inside now, Robert Barr. You're watching the race leader, Donnie Schott. He's got one lap to go before he claims the $50,000. Skip Jackson is second. Dumsley and Barr are drag racing for third. But it's going to be the driver from North Dakota in the USA. Donnie Schott, the winner of the Goff and Gilmore Cat 50,000. He's 50 grand richer. Jackson second, Dumsley third. Yep, another golden moment on this week's episode of Checkered Flag. We dig deep into the archives. And uh, that was one of the better ones. Donnie Shots. What a driver. That was so long ago. And even back then, Warren, people were touting that he was the next Steve Kinzer. No, yeah. one's, no one's been disappointed. No, they certainly haven't. They were, they were definitely not wrong. So tonight's A-Main here in Lismore, presented by Legend Cars Australia. It's Morris Giffen Mitchell, Seaton, Glenn Mitchell, Braden Wilmington, and over the page, Rawlings, SA Moon, Christie, Neil, Bond, Davis, Rawlings, Sullivan, Moon, Brand, Michael Cook, and Ashley Hodak scheduled to start 19th. 
in this event. Well, this is going to be really fascinating. The heat racing, producing good side-by-side -side stuff. We're in for more of the same here. We are. Big field. Morris, he crawls to the start finish line, now stands on it. Green flag conditions, he had them all packed up, Warren. He did, he got quite a job, the old fox. He, uh, he, he held them back and then jumped on the gas and uh, made a nice handy break over Brad Giffen there. Yep, Giffen in second. Mitchell in the fluoro paint job, running in third position. Aaron Seaton in the white 30 car is fourth. Challenger on the outside in car 89 is Braden Wilmington. And Wilmington not doing too bad a job. Gee, there's some hard racing going on out there at the moment. Yeah, nearly three wide there. And Wilmington's trying the, trying the brave line up there in the marbles, giving it a run. The boys are flattening the boards. On board with Adam Brand, the country music star. Tonight, aspiring to be a speedway star. Look at Aaron Seaton. Three wide again. Seaton wasn't, uh, wasn't leaving anything behind there. Oh, this is great stuff. Across the start, finish line. 20 lap journey. Four laps down, and now we see Braden Williamson upstairs, car number 89, challenging Paul Morris. Aaron Seaton immediately behind him. Here comes the eight car flashing around the outside. Brett Mitchell, a bit hard to know where to look. Yeah, poor, I've got to feel sorry for Paul Morris here. In his heat race, he, he switched to the outside and got past. So in the feature race now, he switched to the bottom. And, the, and uh, the 89 car there is trying to drive around the outside of him. He, he doesn't know where to go. This will look good, Aaron Seaton very much in the thick of things that's brett mitchell to the left of screen in the orange fluoro car wonderful speedway tonight from the legend cars well i'll tell you what if you want to go motor racing you could do a lot worse than start in this category the price is ranging 15 to 20 thousand dollars i believe gets you in the car the uh the legend car australia people bring the spares to the racetrack and pretty much off you go. A very cost-effective class to have this much excitement. So you don't have to invest a fortune in spare inventory because you can buy it as you need it at the venue. Dude, that's a that's a fantastic innovation. It certainly is. And, and, and speaking of fantastic, this race, we've got Seaton up the front in his first ever legend car race, challenging for the lead against the 89 car of Wilmington. You've got Morris there running side by side with Giffen back in second. And then they're side by side for, for seventh and eighth as well. <laughs> So a number of second generation drivers are shining as we see Aaron Seaton go by on the outside of a slower car. 89, Braden Wilming Wilmington not wanting to lose touch with him. Long way to go, we're at mid-race distance in this one. And Aaron Seaton, well who would have thought, first meeting in a legend car, doing a superb job. No doubt, it, no doubt his, uh, his dad Glenn has been uh, coaching him through the night and they've picked up this bottom line and still got a, a level of grip there. So uh, by hanging into the bottom groove, he's letting the other guys have to go to the outside if they want to pass him. Now we so often see in this form of racing, in oval track racing, I mean, slower cars either helping or hindering a driver's progress. I reckon they could play a decisive role here too in just a moment because the leading group of cars are very tightly packed and there's a couple of slower boys ahead of them which could create havoc. Oh, talking about creating havoc. Seaton's gone infield, but he had a massive amount of help. Wilmington, I'm sure, will incur the wrath of officialdom here. Yeah, I, I don't know. Seaton, Seaton there on the outside, went to go around the lap car, got sideways there, Dave, and I don't know if Wilmington really could have avoided him there. He started to lose it, didn't he, the back end. And there is the onboard perspective. Seaton will be gutted. That's a shame for the youngster. He was doing a great job. Yeah, he really was doing a great job. So Seaton is now at the back of the field. So the officials deeming that he was, in fact, the cause of the stoppage, as you indicated, might be the case, Warren. At the time, I actually saw it the other way. Doesn't matter. As the battle continues, and, oh, car hard into the wall on the main straight. It's Moon in 79 i wonder if he had a problem there the yeah. thing just didn't turn no i think uh, he got out of shape these cars uh, are very twitchy to race he gets way out of shape here they run a manual steering box in these cars and he was really struggling to get it back the other way and uh I, look that's a heavy contact into the wall there so good news is the driver is fine as this action continues 
Wilmington down the back straight. You can see that Giffen is immediately behind him. Morris, meanwhile, is battling with the driver of car number 34, Robbie Rawlings, who's proving very competitive. Again, we ride on board with Adam Brand, lap 12 of 20. You can see these guys are starting to swing on the steering wheel a little bit harder now. Track slicked off. The, the guys are running two grooves quite consistently, outside and inside. And the, and the cars are starting to hang the tail out. It's a twitchy little race car. It's hard to run in these conditions. Jason SA on the charge now in the black machine, car number 13. He's been fairly consistent. Paul Morris starting to lose touch with him just a fraction. But as we've seen in previous races, in this class of racing, it is never all over. You can come back when you're seemingly gone. Absolutely. Take Brad Giffen here up, challenging for the lead with Wilmington. He was back in fourth or fifth only a few laps ago, and uh, now he's found that high groove to his liking. We'll see if he can get the job done. Now, Wilmington taking the conservative approach out in front, driving around on the pole line, as we saw Aaron Seaton do in an earlier heat race. There's no doubt that part of the track has retained moisture, getting fairly slick elsewhere. Here's Morris having a crack on the inside of SA. Back on board with Adam Brand, who's a fair way back in the field. And good on him for having a crack tonight. He loves his speedway. Of course, his first big hit was a song titled Dirt Track Cowboy. It was a tribute to sprint car racing. It really will help get him noticed, if I can use that expression. Yeah, he's certainly well known on the country music scene nowadays. <laughs> to say the least. Back section of the circuit. Car 13 is SA, and here's Morris driving away on the inside. Up front, meantime, we see Wilmington. He's, a, he's under heavy pressure now from Giffen. Yeah. Giffen's looking all over the racetrack. And you see, he just he had that bottom groove, ended up in the slick part, slick part of the track, and uh, lost a bit of drive. Oh! Big contact. It's all happening out there on the speedway. Giffen. And uh, had to find an interesting way of passing the slower car. Yeah, Wilmington got into the lap car there and nearly turned himself over. He's got to count himself pretty lucky, I think. The black machine of SA on the outside now. Oh, off Giffen. Things are getting a little untidy out there, boys. Last racing lap now. And Wilmington, can he get home? The black car is coming from the clouds with half a lap to go. And look who's snug into third. Paul Morris there. A few moments ago, we thought he was out of contention. He never gives up, so... Wilmington, Braden Wilmington off turn four, takes it. Main event winner tonight at Lismore. Well, honestly, that was chaos in a good way. Yeah, some exciting racing there. Plenty of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. So recapping the results, well done to Wilmington. He started from P6 in the race and was able to fend off all challenges. He had to take some very interesting racing lines. <laughs> The last couple of laps, too. There's a bit of pandemonium happening out there. I did allude to the slower car factor and how it could impact on the, the fortunes of the top runners, and it, it sort of was looking that way. Yeah, it's very hard to judge where, where they're going to go and, uh, and what you can do with them. You know, you've got to pick your line and be committed. But uh, as we see the race recap here, Paul Morris jumped out to a handy lead to start with, but unfortunately he couldn't keep it up there. So looking now at the speedway.com.au race recap. Morris, as he's done on numerous occasions tonight at the pointy end of the pack. Giffen, then Mitchell. There's the eventual winner, Wilmington, up high on the circuit. Aaron Seaton in the white car. Well, he was running so strongly. And, of course, was involved in an incident that led to a stoppage, and he was sent to the back of the bus. Yeah, have to uh, consider himself a little bit unlucky, Aaron Seaton. He might have had a... No victory in his maiden race. Look, it was possible. He was certainly looking for any advantage he could find during the early stages of the race. The onboard camera angle's terrific tonight, putting you right in the driver's seat. And despite these cars being powered by 1250cc Yamaha engines, very quick for what they are. That was the incident I alluded to with Seaton heading infield, no harm done. No damage to the car. He was able to restart, albeit from the back. And well, these guys settled down to fight it out up front, didn't they? They certainly did. Wilmington there on the inside and Giffen on the outside. They ran wheel to wheel for a number of laps. And uh, 
Here we go with the lap car. That's the one that uh, put the cat amongst the pigeons. Nearly cost Giffen the race there as well. <laughs> but Wilmington somehow managed to keep going. A little bit of contact wasn't going to deter him. And this was the run of the chequered flag now with the driver of car 89 getting the job done in advance of SA by about four car lengths. Yeah, and Wilmington will be well pleased with that one. The winner of night one here of the North Coast Legend Car Classic. Reminding you, you'll see part two on next week's show. Out of the car. And he's got to be happy with that, has he? US Legend Cars International, the presenting supporter of tonight's coverage. We thank them. Meanwhile, here's Matt Payne. Braden Wilmington, awesome driving there to get away with the win in that one. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, we, oh, it was it was hard, but yeah, we we were just there at the end, run the bottom, and yeah, <laughs> really scary moment. Two laps to go, coming onto the front straightaway. Oh uh, yeah, it reminded me of the New South Wales Junior Sedan title. A similar thing happened. Um, yeah, but oh, so lucky I got it down, and yeah, ended up with the win. I'm so happy. Pretty happy winner there, Braden Wilmington. Hard fought second place there, Jason Essay, great job. Yeah, mate, look, look, we come off position eight, mate, and there was no track for me down the bottom, so I thought mid-tracked up the high would give her a crack, and she's paid off, mate, so it was excellent. Thank you very much. Good way to get the weekend underway. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great start for tomorrow night, mate. Thank you very much. Paul, you reckon uh, the last lap at Bathurst was tough, but you drove most of that race without a steering wheel. Yeah, well, they sort of go around in corners themselves, but you know, when it gets a bit tight, there's not much you can do, so I just... Had my hand on the steering column and my knee jammed up near it and just kept on going. Pretty exciting race all over though. Yeah, it was really good. Some uh, you know some really awesome drivers in the series and just to race side by side for 20 laps with some quality guys was, was really good fun. Sets up well for tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, it does, mate. So um, you know, hopefully the track's like it is tomorrow night as well and plenty of people turn out and we put on a good show. Bring it on. Back up to you, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Matt. <laughs> they certainly did put a good show on. Paul Morris thoroughly enjoying himself, you get the impression. So the Lube Alloy Country Series, obviously tonight's racing forming part of that. There's the progress point score with Rawlings on 575 in advance of Cook and Hebditch. We come back next week on Checkered Flag with part two, night two of this for US Legend Cars International. And for more information on the Legend Cars, check out their website here in Australia. And that show next week, of course, right here on Fox Sports 5 at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. A reminder again about the Robbie Gordon Charitable Trust, the speed car driver seriously injured at Warrnambool in uh, late last year. You can donate bank account details on screen or inquire via email doing it for Robbie at hotmail.com. That takes us out. Good to work with you again tonight, Warren, and we look forward to more of the same next week. Yeah, thanks, David. Fantastic race cars here. What a great feeder class. You can see these junior guys uh, with uh, second generation guys coming up through the sport. You know, these 1250cc Yamaha driven cars, up to 10,500 RPM, really gives you the feel of what's going on. Spec bodies, spec tyres, keeps the affordability there so you can still, any, any, any guy out in the street can go and run one of these. Oh, no doubt. Look, really enjoyed the racing. Look at this three wide, almost four wide action here. Fabulous racing. What more could you ask for? Yep, it was sensational, and as I say, it'll be even better next week. Thanks for watching Check It Flag tonight. Enjoy the rest of your week.